Hey, and welcome back to another Time Sticking YouTube video. Today we're going to be talking about a really interesting topic, video game watches. Predating a lot of video game consoles that we're familiar with today, these wristwatches are a really interesting take on what you can wear on your wrist. So stick with us through this intro, and we're going to have a look at them with you. Being a benchmark in timekeeping, digital watches started out in the 1970s, but the original versions of these were pretty expensive and very basic. However, as microchips and motherboards became smaller and smaller, the overall capability of digital watches to perform more complicated functions became increasingly prominent. Contemporarily, as digital wristwatches were hitting their stride with new innovations, the video game industry was gaining its legs. With computing and interactive video technology progressively gripping the imagination of a new generation of watch wearers, it was only a matter of time that these two industries would have some crossover. Initially, video game watches were released as novelties, a new way for brands to branch out and appeal to younger audiences. Some gaming watches featured hit brands like Barbie and Ghostbusters as well, adding a new layer of entertainment to the experience of toys and films. In truth, it may have been that these wristwatches were a bit of a money grab to start. Despite this more potentially bleak sentiment though, loads of people, both young and old, were able to bring the arcade with them everywhere they went. Porting pop culture darlings to simplified racing, platforming, and puzzle solving games, these wrist-bound micro cabinets added to the strength and cultural prominence of gaming and personal computing through the 80s and 90s. The first gaming watches that ever hit the market were created by a company called Nell Sonic in the mid-1980s. Founded in 1981, this MZ Berger-owned watch company sought to capitalize on bringing gaming and watchmaking together after initial successes with licensed toy brand watches. Bringing heavy hitters to the table such as Zelda, Super Mario Brothers, Qbert, Frogger, and Tetris, among many others, Nell Sonic was a powerhouse of gaming watch releases. Borrowing the same technology used in calculators and calculator watches, these gaming watches required simple button presses to control the character sprites on screen. By today's standards, these gaming devices were pretty primitive, but with colorful designs and rad depictions of beloved characters, they were a cool way to entertain oneself on the fly. Though Nelsonic eventually went under in 1999, their legacy lives on with both gaming and watch collectors. Having mimicked other handheld game innovators like Mattel, who released the first handheld game in 1976, Nelsonic made playing favorite characters, poker games, blackjack, and racing accessible on the go, without the bulk of larger handheld devices. Aside from the overall appeal of the Nelsonic watches, there were also other digital watch companies that sought to go after this technology and try new innovations. A particular watch of note is Casio's Infraceptor JG100 released in 1995. This timepiece used IR or infrared beams to play a basic fantasy game in multiplayer mode between watches. Its other complications included a stopwatch and a phone book, something a bit more sophisticated than Nelsonic's game watches. The phone book function was especially important if you needed to call a friend for a meetup to slay dragons and the like. It may have set some geeks back a bit of change when it was first released, but it predates the now multi-billion dollar multiplayer game market by some years. Though video games have far surpassed the simpler technology of early gaming watches, these timepieces still hold a fascination with nostalgic collectors. To many, they stand as a great historical crossover between video gaming and horology. Being indicative of a time when personal computing and entertainment were blossoming into how we understand them today, they're a fun flashback that's easy to interface with. The market for these watches being formed exclusively by second party or used sellers, it'll be interesting to see if any company decides to bring these machines back. With many gamers reaching middle age and beyond, gaming watches could easily have an audience and perhaps influence a new generation of gamers to respect video gaming's origins. But until then, if you're a horologically minded gamer or just looking for a little bit of nostalgia, you should look for one of these timepieces. Though they might not always tell the time and just be purely for gaming, they're a fun way to look at the history of both wristwatches and gaming alike. Hello, and thanks for watching our YouTube video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and you can find similar videos right here. 
For more new and interesting content from Time Sticking on our channel, please subscribe at the link here. And for more information about wristwatch repair and watch maintenance generally, you can find us at timesticking.com. Thanks so much and have a great day.